Hi everyone and welcome to another presentation on the technical track of the Data Science Salon YouTube channel. This video is presented to you by Kashir Fersou, the principal research scientist at Zalando, Europe's leading e-commerce company for fashion and lifestyle. Kashif will talk about modern probabilistic time series forecasting methods using deep learning. Enjoy. So hello, my name is Kashif, and I work as a research scientist at Zalando, which is a European fashion e-commerce platform based out of Berlin in Germany. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, deep learning for probabilistic time series forecasting. Uh, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I've lived and worked, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who have been custodians of their lands for thousands of years. I pay my respect uh, to their elders, past and present, as well as past and present Aboriginal elders of other communities, and pass on their universal message of taking care of the land and its precious resources. So as noted in the title, I'll be talking about deep learning methods based uh, for time series forecasting, and we'll start with the introduction. Um, uh, two classical methods and then dive into outlining how one can use deep learning models for forecasting. Once I have a, uh, once I've set up the model, I will show how one can use uh, exogenous uh, data to get even better forecasts. Finally, I'll present a recipe to do a uh, probabilistic forecasts with these, uh, with the, the, the building blocks um, that I show you to obtain really powerful time series models. <clears throat> I will then finish with a summary of the techniques as well as some references and then we'll be available uh, to answer your questions. So let's get uh, started. So uh, time series forecasting is a fundamental aspect of many uh, businesses and scientific problems, be it in climate science, the energy sector or, or in commerce. Uh, these forecasts are used for downstream tasks in particular to make decisions. Uh, probabilistic forecasts, where one is interested in the full predictive distribution, are also crucial for tasks that use these uh, forecasts together with their uncertainties, for example, in price optimization, anomaly detection, strategic planning, and many of the problems being discussed uh, in this conference as well. Also, the individual um, uh, entities in time series data are usually correlated with each other and models need the capacity to learn the relation, these relationships to get, uh, uh, to, uh, to get improved uh, forecast accuracy. As an example, to model the demand of an article it is important to not only model its sale, but also the effects of competing articles, which is referred to as cannibalization. A univariate model would uh, not have the inductive bias to uh, account for this kind of effect. So classical time series forecasting methods rely on the ARMA method and its variant like ARIMA. Apart from the fact that these uh, methods require manual feature engineering, they also suffer from the curse of dimensionality. They require frequent uh, retraining and are focused more on model interpretation rather than test set accuracy. Typically in the classical setting, one trains a model for each individual time series, which can become computationally inefficient when dealing with say millions of time series. As is the trend these days, when dealing with such a situation, uh, we can turn to deep learning methods. So deep learning models have uh, shown impressive results over classical methods in many fields like uh, computer vision, speech recognition, um, natural language processing, and of course, uh, time series forecasting, which is uh, related to sequence modeling in NLP. <coughs> uh, <coughs> as is done in NLP, uh, the, the main construct that's used uh, to model these sequences uh, are recurrent neural networks like uh, the LSTM. So the majority of the classical forecasting methods only focus on point forecast. Uh, which are, uh, which in some sense are forecasting only the mean or the median, <coughs> median of the future distribution. In the deep learning setting, uh, to obtain probabilistic forecasts, uh, there's two uh, approaches. 
One approach is to learn the target uh, distribution uh, parameters, and the other approach is to use uh, Bayesian neural networks. <coughs> so today uh, I'll uh, concentrate on uh, uh, this method of learning target uh, uh, distribution parameters. So uh, how do how do we um, uh, model uh, sequences? Well, um, like I said, we use uh, recurrent neural networks. Um, and um, if you um, just a recap, these uh, recurrent neural networks are networks with loops in them. So um, which enables uh, their neurons to represent the history of observations. So at each time point, <coughs> xt, um, the network gets input data and the previous state and uh, the recurrent neural network outputs the next uh, uh, state, h t plus one. And uh, this is illustrated in this, uh, in this diagram here. So th this state uh, in reality <coughs> encodes um, the history of the sequence up to th uh, this point uh, via the parameters which through the process of learning are optimized to make good uh, prediction on unseen data. As is uh, the case with uh, deep learning methods, we train a single global model, which learns, um, which gets to learn over all the different time series in our training data, allowing us to learn in a computationally efficient manner, which uh, is like how we learn, say, vision-based deep learning uh, models by training on, say, millions. Uh, a single model trains on, on millions of images. And, and that's the same case here. So point forecasting methods take the hidden state, which is a vector encoding the history, right? Uh, as I said, is a vector encoding the history of the sequence till uh, this point and output a single, um, single point uh, forecast or the estimate of that point forecast. And the model is uh, then trained via uh, say some mean squared error loss um, um, and um, with respect to the ground truth, for the next time point. So you basically train this way uh, with all your uh, training data. And then uh, when the model is used for prediction, we first, uh, what we do is we run the, the, this recurrent neural network over some historical data to get some warm up state here given by H uh, T. Um, and then this, uh, the, the state of this RNN is continued into prediction times by feeding its uh, predicted output back into the RNN together with the, the, the next state, H uh, T plus one, right? Uh, with RNNs, we can, uh, in this, in this uh, uh, way, we can uh, get a forecast for, um, uh, for as many steps into the future as we desire, just by feeding the, the output back into the, uh, recurrent uh, neural network. Now our uh, data set of time series can be thought of as a, a list of numbers or a matrix. But uh, if you think about it, time series data typically has more information uh, which a model should be able to leverage to give uh, better predictions. For example, you can give each uh, time series an ID so that the global um, network knows which time series it's working on. We, can, uh, we also have a concept of uh, real world time, uh, meaning the hour of the day or the day of the week or week of the month and so on. Uh, we should be able to provide this information to the network too, so that it uh, learns uh, seasonal patterns in order to provide better forecasts uh, in the future. Finally, many time series are uh, grouped together or, uh, or come from a, some kind of grouping uh, and have more than a single categorical um, um, uh, pro, pro, uh, property, uh, and sometimes it can even have, uh, a time series can have additional uh, dynamic uh, um, uh, features as well. And uh, uh, all this kind of extra information are called covariates, and a model um, should be able to use it. So let's see how we can modify um, what we have till now, uh, uh, our model so that it can use all the all these uh, additional covariates as well. Uh, let's start with the, the ID. 
So a, a powerful and practical uh, deep learning technique, which some of you might uh, might know, is to use embeddings for categorical um, co covariates. Uh, this means some categorical ID, like some the ID of some particular style of shoe, um, um, is converted into a, a vector representation of a certain size. Um, so this ap approach allows for relationships between the categories to be captured. So perhaps uh, um, a high heel sh the representation of a high heel shoe is very similar to a re representation of a, a ankle boot uh, and so forth. Um, the networks uh, then have the, the capacity to move these vector representations around in directions which give a better prediction through the process of learning. Once you've, uh, the, the great thing about these embeddings is that once you've learned um, um, an embedding for a particular ID, uh, you, can, uh, you can also use those embeddings for other, uh, uh, other downstream tasks not related to, uh, not related to uh, forecasting. Um, so, uh, but the upshot is that combining these embeddings with deep learning models yields powerful time series models. Uh, which allow the model to make sense of these uh, categorical covariates. Next, we have time, uh, the real world time, um, um, because um, um, time series uh, data or uh, the values, the targets of the time series fall on um, a specific uh, time. Uh, they have a specific time associated with them. Uh, and, and because real world events happen at certain time or are cyclical or, um, or, um, or, or repeat uh, um, within a, a window of a day or a week and so on, it's very important for our model to make use of this uh, time data. So uh, what can be done with time is that you can take a, a particular time index, uh, real world time, and, uh, and convert it into a uh, kind of a normalized uh, feature. In this case, uh, I, have, I can take my time and convert its day of week into an, uh, a cyclical number, uh, which, is, uh, a bit, uh, which is kind of normalized. Right? So given a, a particular time series with a specific uh, frequency, I can create uh, for each time point, um, um, a uh, time feature uh, which is normalized and is cyclical. And then I can, uh, from all these time features, I can put it into a vector of time features, which in some sense encodes the current time for a particular event in our time series. And this is a very important to feature, which then the model can use to make sense of when uh, something happened uh, in order to then make a better prediction into the future. The previous time values of a time series make an excellent prediction for the next uh, time point. Uh, or, or if not the previous time point, say uh, the time point from a week uh, from now or, or the data from uh, a month from now because of the cyclic nature of many time series. So to make the job of the model a bit easier, it's also helpful to add lag features for each time point, which are essentially just the values uh, of, a, uh, of a particular time series uh, concatenated with uh, lag values. For example, in this example, uh, uh, at each time point, I concatenate um, with, to, to, to the target, I concatenate the value seven days from now and say 30 days from now and so on. Again, uh, these features can be stacked into a vector of uh, these lag values for each time point. Finally, uh, holidays and special dates account for certain behavior in time series, which might be worth modeling. A naive approach might be to use, say, indicator variables for each uh, special date, meaning it's always zero, except for that uh, when that special date occurs, in which case it's one. So instead of uh, uh, such a, a, a naive approach, um, uh, there's uh, a smarter way to, to, uh, to model holidays, which is to create a distance to a date feature. This way, the, um, the model knows 
uh, in some sense, uh, when a particular holiday or special date is approaching. And uh, the model also knows uh, that a particular uh, special date has passed and so forth. So again, just like in the lagged features, given a list of special holidays or special dates, we can create uh, such a, um, um, a vector of, um, of uh, these holiday features and then uh, uh, also give that uh, to, to, uh, to our model. And this vector is uh, different for each time point. So essentially now we have a vector of covariates for each time point. So we can change our model uh, so that uh, it's now a conditional model. Uh, and it's a conditional model uh, conditioned on uh, the covariates at each time point. And the way one does the conditioning in deep learning is to concatenate uh, this vector with the target. And then uh, this concatenated vector goes into the RNN to output our hidden state like, uh, like I showed you. And then uh, at inference time, uh, we, uh, we output uh, our prediction. And this prediction then, uh, uh, as I said, uh, goes uh, back into the RNN, but now it will get concatenated with the covariates for the next time uh, point and so forth. And this way, uh, we can predict uh, till uh, the time horizon uh, that we desire. So the problem of modeling uncertainties in time series forecasting is also of vital important, importance for uh, assessing how much to trust the prediction for downstream tasks, such as anomaly detection or uh, business decision making. So without probabilistic mo modeling, the importance of the forecast in regions of low noise, uh, which is uh, regions where you have small variance around some mean value versus a scenario with high noise uh, cannot be distinguished. Hence, uh, point estimate models ignore risks stemming from this uh, noise, which uh, could be of particular importance in some contexts, such as uh, um, making business decisions. You can imagine a point forecasting method would not care if the prediction uh, is a very recent one or uh, a very uh, or one which is very much into the future by which point this prediction is more or less random. Um, this information is uh, encoded in probabilistic uh, forecasts. So given this recipe that I've uh, talked about, let's see how we can uh, change it to now get uh, probabilistic forecasts. Well, uh, essentially the DPAR method from Amazon AI Labs uh, uh, does this. It essentially uh, replaces the point forecasting part I showed you with a module which outputs parameters of some chosen uh, probability distribution. For example, the mean and variance which defines uh, Gaussian or the parameters of a negative binomial uh, if the, our time series is uh, uh, count data. Our job, uh, at least the job of the neural network, is to make sure uh, to enforce the constraints that the parameters of these chosen distribution um, need to enforce. For example, the variance of the Gaussian needs to be positive. So we just need to make sure the deep learning model outputs positive values for this uh, particular parameter of the Gaussian. Uh, uh, just uh, schematically, the change is uh, not so different uh, from the point forecasting one. We replace the point forecasting output now with a module that outputs the parameters of some uh, distribution. And our loss now changes. Uh, instead of some point estimate loss, we uh, maximize the log likelihood uh, of uh, that distribution given the ground truth data at the next time point. So the great thing now is that after training, we can once again run some time series uh, to warm up uh, our hidden state. And then for the period of time uh, that we need forecasting, uh, we can uh, output the parameters of our distribution. And now uh, in, we can, given this distribution, we can sample. Uh, we can get a sample uh, from this uh, sample output from this distribution and not just a single sample output, but as many uh, samples as we uh, desire. 
And then these samples are fed back into the RNN in an autoregressive fashion, just like in a point forecast. And uh, in this way, we can get um, uh, multiple runs, uh, multiple sample forecasts. Uh, and then these sample forecasts can be used to ca uh, calculate any probability quantiles that we want for our business problem. So uh, as an example, our prediction now looks like this. Uh, uh, say for say 200, uh, if you sample say 200 times from these 200 samples, we can now produce the median as well as the 50% quantile uh, prediction interval and the 90% uh, prediction interval, which is uh, uh, which then encodes the kind of uncertainty uh, associated with these uh, forecasts. Now, the great thing is that with this uh, general technique in mind, we uh, can extend it to, um, to multivariate probabilistic forecasting. Of course, as is the trend uh, these days with sequence model, we can replace uh, uh, the RNN with an attention module, allowing us to learn over bigger time windows in a computationally efficient manner. Uh, some problems uh, do not require an arbitrary size, size prediction window, in which case we can also change our model to a uh, fixed window length one. Um, but still the, the same um, recipe uh, still works in that situation as well. Also for modeling um, causal relationships, we can extend this setup. I presented to even do a uh, causal uh, inference here. But that's, uh, uh, we'll leave, uh, I'll leave that for uh, another time. So in summary, uh, I want to press home the point that uh, deep learning models can do time series forecasting very well by incorporating covariates. Um, and uh, we can train a, a global model over a large collection of time series for a lot of business use cases. Right? And these models not only perform um, uh, well on standard uh, time series test sets, but also on real world uh, data. As all deep learning models, they are constrained by the fact that they assume that the data distribution um, will not change in the future. And that, uh, and the second uh, assumption uh, of these models is that these covariates that I've defined are also known in the future. And that uh, one has, of course, um, like in any deep learning uh, model, one has enough uh, training data for these models to train on. Um, all these are actually, um, um, all these uh, constraints are, are, are not too uh, difficult uh, to deal with if uh, one of them is, uh, is uh, missing. All right, so finally, let me just leave you with the, the link to some uh, of the code for trying out these specific models uh, that I talked about here um, using two different um, uh, deep learning frameworks. Uh, one is uh, from uh, using PyTorch from, uh, from us. The other one is from um, the Amazon Labs using MXNet. Um, I also uh, want to leave you with the, um, a blog post about uh, um, a multivariate extension to these methods as well. Finally, uh, um, there's also a blog post on the third place winning entry of the prestigious M5 um, um, uh, time series forecasting challenge, which uh, also used uh, our uh, framework for their solution as well. So do check that out if you're interested in that. All right, so I'll stop here and thank you. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. That was Kashif Razul, Principal Research Scientist at Zolando, with his presentation about deep learning for probabilistic time series forecasting. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to watch more technical presentations from leading data scientists that share their insights and best practices.